Hello everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. This lesson is the second lesson on diving into the deep. We will be looking at the deepest diving whales and their adaptations to diving into the depths. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So we already know that most species of whales, dolphins and porpoises, collectively known as cetaceans, live mainly in the top 200 metres of the ocean, also known as the sunlight zone. This is because most of their prey lives in this area and that they also need to come up to the surface of the sea to breathe air. However, there are two species of cetacean that dive particularly deep, and these are the sperm whale and the Cuvier's beaked whale. The Cuvier's beaked whale is the deepest diving marine mammal on the planet, and they can dive to 2,992 metres deep. But how long can it hold its breath for? Can you hold your breath for 20 seconds? Take a deep breath in and count down with me in your head. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, take a deep breath in again. So the Cuvier's beaked whale can hold their breath for 2 hours and 43 minutes. That is 500 times the amount that you just held your breath for. So amazing that they can dive so deep and hold their breath for so long. So why do you think that these species of whales dive so deep? Animals dive deep for one reason and one reason only, and that's to get their food. Sperm whales and Cuvier's beaked whales are found mainly in waters where there are canyons and trenches, and these areas of the ocean are jam-packed full of squid. All of this squid is packed into the trenches and canyons with nowhere to escape to, so they're perfect feeding areas for these deep diving squid-eating species like the sperm whale. So it's worth holding their breath for hours and hours and diving so deep to find these rich feeding areas. These animals do these deep dives day in, day out, repeating the dives a number of times every day and don't seem to have any problems with it at all. So the question is, how do they do that? These air-breathing marine mammals are adapted to living and hunting in the oceans because they are really, really good at holding their breath. But it's not an easy job. Firstly, they have to deal with the dark and they have to find their prey in the dark. They have to deal with a huge amount of pressure underneath the water and there's no oxygen to breathe so they have to hold their breath. And once they've eaten, they then come all the way back up to the surface of the water. So what is going on in their bodies that makes these long dives possible? Well, let's have a look. Firstly, how do they find their prey in the dark? Well, as we already know, sound is a cetacean's primary sense, especially that of toothed whales. And all of these deep diving whales are toothed whales. And we know that they use echolocation to find their food. So remember, echolocation is when they make clicking and squeaking noises in their head. And these sounds pass out of the animal. And if the sound waves hit an animal, the echo comes back to the sperm whale in this instance to tell the sperm whale where about in the ocean their squid is, how far away it is, its size and shape as well. So this is how they hunt in the dark. And here we can see the image of a sperm whale hunting its favourite food, the huge giant squid. And they have these massive underwater battles in the deep dark depths of the ocean. The sperm whale dives to about 2,250 metres deep and they can hold their breath for an hour and a half to feed on their favourite prey, which is the huge giant squid. 
Their huge head is made of the organ which helps them to find this food in the depths. Did you know that because giant squid live so deep, they are hardly ever seen by humans? Most of what we know about giant squid is from fishermen, who have seen dead giant squid when they have died and then floated to the surface. Okay, so that's how they feed in the dark. But these whales also need to deal with the crushing pressure. At sea level, the air that surrounds us presses down on our bodies. You don't feel it because the fluids in your body are pushing outwards with the same force. But dive down into the ocean, even just a few metres though, and you can start to feel the pressure. Have you ever dived to the bottom of a swimming pool and felt your ears pop? This is an increase in pressure in your ear. The deeper you go under the sea, the greater the pressure of the water pushing down on you. It is because of pressure that human divers cannot dive very deep compared to other animals. The pressure from the water would push in on the person's body, causing any airspace that's filled with air to collapse, for example, the lungs. So if humans dived really deep, we would simply get crushed. So what is going on in a whale's body to help it deal with the pressure? Well, firstly, a whale's lungs can collapse safely under pressure and they can also fold down their rib cages. Whales can withstand dramatic pressure changes because their bodies are more flexible than ours. Their ribs are made with bendable cartilage, the same material that's in our ears, which allows the rib cage to collapse at pressures that would easily slap our bones. So at 1,000 metres down, a Cuvier's beaked whale experiences 100 times the pressure that they do at the surface, enough to completely compress the air in their lungs. Whales also have to go a really long time without breathing. They are experts at holding their breath. Remember that they can only breathe air at the surface of the water. So to save oxygen, they actually store oxygen in their muscles and blood and use this slowly throughout their long dives. They don't store this oxygen in their lungs because remember their lungs collapse and compress under pressure. Their blood is different to a human's blood, which means they can store oxygen for longer and use it slowly. But it's not enough to just be stingy with their oxygen. Once they're in deep water, they have to sneak up on their prey and for that they need to find oxygen. Fortunately, they have their secret supply as we know, they store oxygen in their blood and muscles. Marine mammals have a higher percentage of oxygen storing red blood cells than most other mammals, making their blood really thick and viscous. They also have a high blood to body volume ratio. They simply have a bigger blood savings account than we do, so they can store so much oxygen in their blood. They also shut off the blood supply to non-essential organs and extremities, so they stop digesting food and they stop kidney and liver function, only using this precious oxygen to keep their hearts, brains and muscles going. You might be wondering how they digest the food that they catch when they are diving this deep. Well, they simply wait until they get back up to the surface of the sea to digest their food. Another way they can store oxygen is to lower their blood rate and their heart beats go down to only a few heartbeats a minute. The animals also adapt their behaviour to save oxygen by reducing how much they move. These deep diving marine mammals don't use loads of energy to swim energetically down into the depths of the ocean. They simply glide down without moving a muscle. Right before diving, they breathe out over 90% of the oxygen in their lungs so that they are not too full of air and buoyant, which would make them float. This allows them to sink rather than swim. Their bodies are perfectly shaped to dive too, as they are shaped like a torpedo, which reduces drag and makes it easy to move through the water. The Cuvier's beaked well even has pockets to tuck their fins into to make them even more streamlined. So here we have an animal which is perfectly adapted to diving so deep. And when they return to the surface, they take deep breaths in to rest and recover 
at the surface of the ocean to re-oxygenate blood for their next dives. But it's important to note that they don't dive this deep or hold their breath for this long on every dive. The duration of most of their dives are much shorter than the maximum duration which this species is capable of. And most dives are much shallower than the maximum depths that we have talked about in this lesson. So even though they can hold their breath for a really long time and dive very, very deep, they don't do this all the time and they certainly don't do it for every dive that they do. And it's also important to note that we are continuously learning and technology is still advancing to help us find out more about these deep diving whales. You never know, the QVA's beaked whale could dive even deeper and hold its breath for even longer. We simply don't know yet. For example, in 2018, researchers found an adult female killer whale dived to a world record depth of 1,087 metres well beyond the previous best for a killer whale which was recorded at 767 metres. So there is still so much to learn about these fascinating animals. Okay, so to recap on this lesson, we know that most species of cetacean live in the sunlight zone, but some species like the sperm whale and the Cuvier's beaked whales can dive deeper than this to find their prey. We know that the Cuvier's beaked whale is the deepest diving marine mammal on the planet and we now know how they are perfectly adapted to dive so deep. Thank you again so much for listening to this lesson. If you want to learn more about orca, please visit our website at orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you very much.